When I first laid eyes on John Arthur Hill, I was mesmerized. John truly, truly looks like a Disney prince. And if you listen to the first time I interviewed him with Darren on Scissorings and the Thing, he confesses that he was, in fact, uh, somewhat of a prince at Disney World. It all leads back to Disney World, apparently, these days. Anyway, um, John, what I love is that I really didn't know much about him. I kind of knew the nuts and bolts, uh, theater actor, singer, incredibly, incredibly attractive gay man on, you know, does the show with Andy on Radio Andy and has his own Sirius XM show now. And like, I was like, okay, he's like hot. He's like cool. He's talented, whatever. But kind of like really watching his social media over the last, I don't know, two years, I really, and I have a hard time articulating it to him later on in this episode, but I just think he's very layered and very kind and very smart, witty, funny, and I just, I think he's a world gem, um, which is why he's really on the tippy top of my list of people that I know in real life that I would just love to uh, have a baby with. I feel like John would just elevate the genes that I have in just a really impressive way. I just, that chiseled jawline. Um, but, you know, I didn't expect to get so vulnerable with John on this episode. I kind of assumed that I would just crack joke after joke after joke, which I do, about having a baby with him. But a little bit of a trigger warning. I definitely talk about my issues with body dysmorphia and diet culture, as does John a little bit. And we talk a little bit about addiction. I don't tend to do disclaimers because I feel like you're, we're all adults here. Um, but I do want to be very sensitive because I'm realizing that the noise of diet culture is really fucking wearing on me. And so if you are in a mood today and you're like, you know what, Liz, I don't want to fucking hear about this, then don't listen to this one. Please um, give me five stars <laughs> for being so kind to warn you. And uh, definitely sign up for my Patreon because I'm going to put the video of John and I talking there. But I did just want to give you an opportunity to bow out if a little bit of talk about kind of the state of the diet world is going to upset you. It's not It's not a huge part of the episode, but it's a little bit. So I just, uh, I want to give you fair warning. I know, but how do you know if it's me calling into the serious show? Like, I don't want to call in and be on hold. Like, I need to make sure I'm getting through. If it's my show, I can say Liz is calling, pick up. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Wow. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't have anything to do with the calls. I see a little screen come up and they say there's like a little list. But it, now only Andy sees that. But when it's my show, I see it and they say Liz from whatever. And sometimes we don't get to them. But if it's you and you say if you text me and say, hey, I have a comment on this, fucking do it. I would never call into the Andy show. I have to be honest with you. I've listened to you guys on that show a couple of times and I find um the callers are just too cringe for me. I like can't. Do, I, it's like it feels very emotionally charged on that show sometimes with the callers. And that's just like not me. I um. it takes me out sometimes. I think, oh, <laughs> this is who's listening. And, and it's not always cringe aside. That's not necessarily the word. But sometimes I'm like, oh, I thought we were in a room full of people who shared our sense of humor. And no, it's not they that. don't. They don't. And also, I would say, I mean, listen, I love them. Up Love yeah, of them. course, of course. And you love them listening. It's like, and they kind of make for a good show. I used to call in to the radio in San Francisco all the time, <laughs> like all the time, because I just wanted to hear myself on the radio. Me too. And um, well, and here we are. Now I get to play pretend with the <laughs> podcast. Um, but I called in to Sway in the morning. Not Amazing. That, like, I guess, a, I guess it was before the pandemic. He had this a woman who I had interviewed for a show. Her name's Carrie Foe. She's a rapper. And I called in and I was like, yo, Carrie, it's Liz. She's like, what? I just <laughs> talked to you <laughs> yesterday. I'm like, I know. I just wanted to be on Sway in the morning. Um, yeah. And also, did you see Sirius XM has a new Whitney Houston channel? Yes, I did. I haven't listened to it yet, but I saw that. It's all I listened have you? to. Yeah, duh. It's all I listened to. Wow. Uh, I, guess I am in like a current 
I'm in a period of saturating myself with certain types of music because I'm writing music. And so I'm trying to put myself in the realm in which I would like to participate. <laughs> so are you listening to like only show, like what kind of music or like, is it for <laughs> another show or what kind of music is it for? Were you going to say show tunes? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, well, one show that I'm writing is uh, more like lesbian horse music. So uh, a lot of like folk, a lot of Indigo Girls, a lot of Taylor Swift, a lot of Casey, K Kelsey Ballerini, a lot of Casey oh, Musgraves, okay. a lot of like, yeah, it's thematic like teenage angst, kind of like country adjacent. Wow. And that's considered <laughs> lesbian horse music. Well, yeah, that's my category for what I'm trying to write in. You know, that's how that was what I liked in high school. Lesbian, like the Indigo Girls. Yeah, that lesbian horse music. Yeah, I mean, and that's not a that's not a pejorative. That's like literally, like I love horses, I love lesbians, I love guitars, and like that's the kind of music I'm drawn to. Yeah, no, I would just consider Indigo Girls like lesbian sweater music. You know? Right. Well, why min why why split hairs? You know, oh, fair enough. Why you can be why? wearing the horse while on a horse, wearing a sweater all while on a horse. You know, I actually happen to know some incredible horse le like lesbians that ride horses in Montana. Ah, oh, the dream. So let me know that when that now is it for a record or is it for a show? It's for a show in New York <clears throat> that I'm doing with Danny Visconti in uh, in a couple weeks. And then I'm writing another show, a solo show here in LA, which you need to come to. It's live. Um, I'm in, uh, gonna come to that. That's a solo show, and that's more of like a old, older, like kind of cat lady lesbian in her 80s, like looking back on her life, and it's more like EDM. <laughs> yes, I will be there. I yeah. will be there with bells on, and that's yeah, in like April, right? April seventh. Yeah, more like dry ice and like mood and edm but also like hospice <laughs> um question for you how are you at standardized testing horrible damn oh it so John, why you, because i you know i really want you to have a kid with me well what does it have to do with standardized testing well because i can't afford private school i mean listen like we gotta oh, like you mean i have to be naturally smart you are naturally smart here's the thing I think well, you know the standardized testing is not is not a good metric of like how smart yeah, I, I am. Okay. I was bad at standardized testing too, so I think I'm smart. I'm just trying to see if I'm I'm like the pudgy short female version of you because I think mm -hmm. I am, which might be why I'm so attracted to you. But then I I'm see. like, well, if the two of us combine, do we just have like a m insanely musically inclined, mm -hmm. fair hair, mm -hmm. fair eyed? little like goddess or god yeah. child a fun person too with a great jawline entertaining i think so or boring <laughs> i know it's always one of those funny things where like i always you know when you look at like angelina jolie and brad pitt's kids and you're like are they going to make the most perfect looking child or are they going to cancel each other out and they made pretty perfect looking children actually yeah you never really know till it comes out do you you don't. Do you have a sister? I have two sisters. Okay, I need to see what they look like. Mm, yeah, you do. Because <laughs> I have two brothers and a sister, and my my older brother that's closest to me in age. We have the same parents. He's gay as well, and he's great. tall and has a great body. Like his body. My wife and I are like, he's so fucking annoying. He could wear like anything he wants. Right. You know. And then I think my mom just didn't know she was pregnant with me for so long and drank so much that like, I just stopped, you know what I mean? I like stopped growing. Are you, well, what are you trying to say? Are you, do you feel short? Because you, you, you look, you look, you look like a supermodel. Keep talking to me. But I like, I don't think, a, I don't see, I don't see height. <laughs> well, yeah, because you're tall. How tall are you? I'm tall. I'm a little John. bit over six, a smidge over six two. But mm. I, you Talk know. Talk dirty to me. Talk dirty to me. Keep talking. You never think what you have is is great, you know? And then you realize when you're my, you know, I'm 45 now. So you're like, oh, I get it. Being tall was great. And and now I'm leading into it. But as a kid, you don't want to be the person who sticks out in middle school. You don't want to, everybody, it doesn't matter. You know, you think everybody else has it so great, you know? But all of us at, in seventh grade feel like, don't notice me. Don't, I don't want anything to, no reason to make fun of me. You know, so I was like very big. 
Yeah. And awkward. I'm, but then later I was like, oh, I guess I can beat all of you up. Yeah. And you've got, I mean, you are looking extra cut these Thank days. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to be my healthiest self. Are you like counting macros? Like what's going on over there? Actually, yes. Oh, for crying out loud. Way to just wait to just take the wind out of my sails on that joke. I don't count them all, but I did for a a very long time. And then I now that I know that the percentages that need to come from what I just aim for that and I do my best. How did you learn how to do that? See, you are smart. I I wouldn't know how. (laughs) A standardized test told me. (laughs) Um, No, I sat down with someone in my gym. I go to a a lesbian gym and I sat down with one. Oh, my God. The one on Melrose. Not that lesbian, not that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not not just lesbians. It's just oh. a lesbian forward gym. Um, and I sat down with a, a lovely lady who gave me my macros and counted my... It's so boring to talk about. Now I sound like an asshole. No, but, um, you don't sound like an asshole. It's Listen, I think it... No, it, it's funny. When, I, when we were getting married, I went to Khloe Kardashian's nutritionist. Mm. Well, but that would bring up a lot of weird questions because is that all that healthy? Is it an Ozempic journey? Well, but no, 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 no. It was so long ago. This is way before Ozempic. Okay. This is when like Chloe was getting into like when she looked, I thought, her best self. Snatched. Snatched, but like healthy. They all right. look sick. You know what I mean? Also, if you have the hookup on Ozempic, like please let me know. Just like You don't want Ozempic. I don't. didn't want. Guess what? I shot myself in the butt with it. I was drunk in New York. I was it's not going to work after once. It did. Well, I mean, it did what it was supposed to do, John. Made I you threw, sick? I threw up in JFK, literally in the what fucking- What terminal? Uh, Delta, obviously. Okay. So yeah, whatever, five. You. In the TSA line and had to tell the girl I was pregnant. Like, you know where you like throw away your bottle? Like it's the last fucking, like before you go into the metal detractor. And I just was like, oh my God. And I had a mask on and I was like, oh fuck, I'm going to puke. I'm going to puke. And I literally turned around, pulled down my mask, puked right there. Yeah. That's the place to do it. No, it's not because they won't let you on a plane if you're sick, John. So what happened? So I lied and said I was pregnant, obviously. And she was like, oh, my God, congratulations. How far along are you? I was like, not that far. (laughs) Ah." And then kept going. And then I just didn't eat food for four days. It was wild. It was a wild thing. I mean, listen, the Ozempic stuff is is tricky because as somebody who has always hated their body and had body dysmorphia and been on every diet, I mean, this guy in Santa Monica Khloe Kardashian's nutritionist was great, but at the same time, I have to be honest with you, I was very lean, but it became a full-time job. That's why I ask about the counting of macros and yes. all of those things, because I've been there and it becomes this like, it really is a, a quite a bit of time and energy. And I became really obsessed with it and he and weighing myself every week, it started to get tricky for me. And the Ozempic stuff is even trickier now because it's like, everywhere in the news. We're all making fun of it, obviously, all the time. I think it was your show or Jeff's show. I was here. I wa- I listened to somebody kind of making fun of it. Chelsea, obviously, Handler went on it. Every motherfucker in LA is on some form of Munjaro mm. fucking Ozempic. And for me, I'm like, well, shit, like maybe I should just go on it if everybody else is on it. Don't go on it. Here's why. Uh, we joke about it because it's the news, but I, I don't joke about it because I have friends who are on it who desperately need it. Okay. Whose lifelong battle with their weight has been so painful that their lives are changing in such a major way. They're finally getting healthy in their mind as well because, you know, it's all tied up with obsession and compulsion and all that stuff. And so I have friends who are, who it's so, it's so, it's such a mockery when you hear people who are skinny or thin saying like, oh, I need to lose that extra 10 pounds. I'm going to go on Ozempic and take it from someone who has a lifelong weight battle who's benefiting from it. I think it's so insensitive. And also skinny, being skinny is so ugly to me. I, for a long time, I had to really kind of counting the macros and stuff got me healthy actually, because I wanted to feel thin. Mm -hmm. But now that I started getting stronger and healthier, I the, the thought, if someone says like, oh, you look so skinny, it's such an insult to me. I don't want to look skinny. I don't want to feel skinny. I want to feel strong and I want to feel healthy. And like the, I think there's going to be a vibe shift, you know? You think? Well, because I, I was do. kind of I think surprised. once everyone is skinny, people are going to be like, oh, I, we all want to be fat now. I think it's going to, once everyone gets a magic pill for everything, then the few people who can look something else unattainable will be the way it's going to go. And I think, yeah. I don't think you, you look perfect to me. Well, thank you. It's tricky because I think I was looking 
you know, there's like body positivity movement. And by the way, I did not plan on having any of this conversation with you, but here we are. And um, we're just like meant to be. But I, you know, I felt like people were starting to look healthier on red carpets. And now I'm like, holy shit. No. You know what even, I mean? I mean, even Angela Bassett saying, you know, what are your tips for red carpet or whatever or nominees? And she was like, oh, don't drink any water after 10 a.m. because you don't want to miss your moment, meaning you're in the bathroom. But it's just so funny, like the quickest. I don't know. It sounded like a beauty tip at first, um, but I think you look great. No, well, isn't for you, you. Okay. Yeah, unless you're a diabetic. I'm not a diabetic. And honestly, right now I have three men in my backyard and I thought I was just getting a couple of plants put in and they have um, knocked out a cement wall they just took down a fucking tree you had to cancel with or move not cancel but move with me yesterday and Crazy. i have, couldn't believe what's going on it's going to cost me a million dollars so okay congratulations on your home journey i'm so proud of you and so <laughs> impressed and so jealous come over i'll cook a macro healthy dinner for you anytime also it, i eat whatever like i i don't i don't like go crazy and like binge because that back to what you said and then we can wrap up the calorie talk but like <laughs> i in the same way i can't I learned what I was eating by tracking on my fitness pal. But once I learned what I ate and what I could eat, what I should eat, then according to my therapist, it was like, okay, now put it down because you cannot be compulsively. It becomes compulsive. It becomes really obsessive. Well, that's I, why I couldn't do Noom. I couldn't do any of that stuff. I started Don't. getting like real dark. I have- um, Yes. It's I, not good. It's not good. My, yes. I, I have, I have a therapist, but then I also have a psychiatrist because obviously I'm on SSRIs or SSRIs. <laughs> excuse me. Being, I got my lips. See, I'm like really sounding LA. I got my lips done yesterday. I get them done you every did? two years. Yeah, look. I mean, you look just fantastic. Light. Just like it is, L, it is LA though, because really. <sighs> I'm a wreck. Okay, you don't need any of that shit. I know, but I do, I do it like every two years. I don't go crazy. I got, I got Botox two weeks ago. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah, but yeah. my point is that I have. <laughs> I don't want to get Sculptra. <laughs> is that your face? I want to get. I won't get it, but I. What is know, that? Like, is that on your face? Yeah, it like stimulates your own. Well, you can also get it on your butt. Is that the placenta? It's not placenta. It's uh, it, it stimulates your own body's collagen production. Mm, okay, I mean, placenta, guys. I don't need that. I don't need a placenta. Well, if um, we have a baby together, I'll make pills out of my placenta, and you can take those. You, you know how much that costs. A bajillion dollars. Mm. Young women under 30 sell their fucking placenta into pills so people can take them for their skin. I think we can just learn to live in the skin we're in. Would you, you wouldn't eat my placenta? You wouldn't Actually, swallow? I totally would. I just don't want to <laughs> buy someone else's. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll give it to you for free. Yeah, if you were like, here, try this. It'll make you snatch. I'd be like, sure, great. Um. <laughs> I yeah, what a what a time. What a time to be alive. Do you go out in WeHo or in New York anymore to gay bars? Or clubs? I go to uh high top sometimes for trivia night, which now has been uh taken over by the Jeff Lewis crew, which there's room for everyone. But once some once I I usually start a trend. And so once people follow in, I usually let people have it. So I've I've stopped going there uh pretty much. I don't go out. No, I don't really. <laughs> it's funny. So I had this funny experience this past But I week. never went out. I was never you a didn't? big go outer. Not really. No. I was an isolator. Yeah, I don't really I never did either. When I first moved to Los Angeles and was like, I'm gay, I definitely would go like Sunday, Funday, Abbey, but I don't like to drink during the day because I get very fucked up and I don't feel good and I have a job. So, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I can't be like feeling that way. And I also don't do drugs. Right. So when you don't do cocaine and you don't like to drink during the day, WeHo can be like a not the right scene for me, right? Oh, quite the opposite. And it's so funny. I um I ended up at the Abbey there for a birthday party for the MILFs from MILF Manor uh, on Tuesday. I hadn't been there in 20 years. And they were How like, was it? at the Abbey. Did um, you get your phone stolen and roofied? Because that's drugged. typically what happens at the Abbey. <laughs> it's funny. I used to go to the Abbey when it was just a coffee shop back in college before they had a liquor license. It was just a little coffee muffin stand. And I would go just to like, I was underage. It was one place I could go. Uh, it was vacant and raining and nobody was really there. But it was a Tuesday night at eight. And I was like with my straight friend, Joey. And we were like, dude, 10 minutes and we're in and out. And that's, a, that's how long we stayed. We said hello to the MILFs and left. I have not watched MILF Manor. Mm. My wife refused. The only reality show that she 
kind of outside of real she's selective about real housewives there's only a few she'll watch um really salt lake city and miami is the only ones that she's interested in um and really the only ones i like either at this time at this present moment but i love uh love after lockup <laughs> i love love after lockup as well it's so fucking unhinged and it's just I, I mean marcelino like what went wrong like what is that guy's brought like she was the best like he could have had it so all behind on it though it's tlc right it is but i don't have live tv so i just buy all the seasons on apple oh interesting i just signed up for hulu plus live tv but it's a little limiting but it's like 10 hundred thousand dollars a day it is ten hundred thousand dollars a day it'll probably increase um but milf's I, it was milf manor is definitely i am very attracted to milfs myself okay um, great and have Me had too. plenty of sex with the milf wow. so i know actually the first woman i ever really slept with was a milf do you die Ugh, it just makes me love you even more than I already did. That's how it should be. Hold I on, get it. even better. Are you ready for this? It was your I, mom. No. <laughs> your ex oh, mom. <laughs> God, no. No, I was at a friend's mom's 50th birthday party at this like oh famous restaurant in San Francisco. And they like rented out the whole thing. And mm. I went to a bathroom and this hot lady, I was 19 at the time. This hot lady push, knocked on the bathroom stall door. I was it Brandy why. Glanville? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Knocked on the door and I opened it like, what the fuck? And she pushed me in and started making out with me. Do you die? And then at the time, I was living on my dad's yacht. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I took her back to the yacht and I had sex with her. Wow. This and, is San Francisco? Yeah. And then she gave me her phone number and I called her the next day and she called me the F word and hung up on me. No, the F word meaning slur? Yeah. No. Oh my God, yeah. no girls could be called that. Neither did I. <laughs> and I was like, really bitch, mean. it was really mean and it was really weird. And I was young and like, I didn't really understand. You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck? And it was so strange. And um, if you put did her- Did you know you were a lesbian though? Well, I'm bisexual, which is why I or keep that. hitting on you. But did you know something was like... Yes, for okay. sure. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I knew, yeah, I think so. I knew early as well. Y yeah. No, I knew early. I was like always into girls and boys. I'm like yeah. into everybody. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but it was so crazy. Can you believe? On a yacht? So chic. But it was That's very amazing. it was very cold. Um, we had a space heater and she called me the F word the next day. Never wow. spoke to her again. It was crazy. But so anyway, all of this to say is that I'm into MILFs. I can't watch MILF Manor. You said you went like as a guest of the MILFs. Like talk me through that. I don't watch reality TV either. I don't even watch the housewives. I watch very little of anything. Um, but because you're at the gym with the lesbians. Right. Honestly, kind of. I'm very much into an IRL experience. I think AI chatbots are coming for everyone's gig and, you know, live in the present moment because, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But I started I recapped MILF Manor just, and I don't recap shows. I just like watched it one time to talk about it. And I pulled some clips just to make fun of it. And I couldn't believe it because MILFs, the whole, the whole concept is it's a bunch of MILFs um, dating younger guys, but the younger guys are the other MILFs sons, including the ones they have brought with them. So it's a bunch of women and their young sons. So wait, the dating, the wait, dating, wait, 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 wait. Yes. The wait, dating, I had Liz. no yeah. Are you serious? Is that yes. legal? Do any of does it? How do they not know the other sons are there? How do they keep they, it private? Because they go on they private don't. dates. Yes, but they don't. They're all with each other. They're all like looking at their son. Like they go on double dates, and sometimes the per the milf who's on a double date, the guy is her son, like the girl, the other woman's son. What the fuck are you talking? What ch what network greenlit this? I girl, mean, it's TLC. Yeah, it's kind of brilliant. I mean, it's, I hate to say it. It's like so bad. It's amazing. It's horrifying. And like, be, they didn't tell them that before they got there, though. They were like, come on the dating show. Because listen, if you were to be told you're a MILF, right? And you have a, a younger son and your younger son is going to be like your wingman to like give you dating advice. That's a cute show. I would like that show. I would go on that show. Be like, oh, sure. Like, you know, like if a mom is on a date and like the comedy being like in her earpiece is her son being like, oh, mom, that was such a dumb thing to say. Order the steak or whatever. But it's not that. The guy, her son is actually dating the other MILFs in the house. So there's- Do they have sex on this show? All the time. Well, oh theoretically, but no. But like, yeah, they hook up. What do you mean theoretically? Have you ever watched um, um, Temptation Island? It's not 
They have sex on that show. It, it, Intercourse. Listen, they're permitted to. I'll say that. Wow, that's crazy. They're, and it's highly encouraged. In terms of what actually goes down, we're at episode five or something. They haven't like actual... I think and there was a hookup in a sauna. There's been a lot of making out, but like, I don't know about Ugh. penetrative sex. <laughs> okay. So they were like, okay, John, thanks for making fun of us. Come to the Abbey. I had one of the MILFs on my show. We reached out just to say like, would you want to come? And yeah. um, they were like, yeah, sure. But like on a, on a lark, we, we, we reached on out a on a lark and said like, would you want to come on the show? And she was like, yeah. And one of the MILFs, Kelly was like, yeah. And so she came on, she was a lovely, lovely guest. Loved her, she's a real estate agent and- um, Of course she is. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Drove up from the OC, did the show at 8 a.m. And she was, afterwards, we had a great time. And she was like, come to the Abbey tonight. It's April, the other MILF's birthday. And so we, you know, we went. Did you get like one of those disgusting, huge slices of cake? Isn't that so weird at the Abbey where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to sit here and drink like roofy drink of like a Long Island iced tea and have like a huge hunk of cake. I've always found it so strange that they have the cake case there. I didn't even see the cake case. Oh, I guess I know what you're talking about. But there was um, everyone except for one of the bills. We were all sober except for one of the milfs who did drink. I bought her. Uh, she requested an express espresso martini. Oh god, Got her that. And then we hightailed it. We got a T-shirt. The milfs brought merch. Uh <laughs> But it was fun. I am dead. <laughs> yeah, the Abbey has turned into that place. You know what I it, mean? Like, it, it makes sense that that's where she had her birthday and that you guys were like, that she ordered an espresso martini. Like, all of that's tracking pretty yeah. well for me. Yeah. Um, I switched over from watching that to now. To, I'm catching up on the Murdaugh. Oh, trial. I just finished it last night. It was fabulous. <laughs> I'm it's, so obsessed. It's so wild. First of all, those guys are so ugly and gross. And I'll say it right now. Like, mm. I don't care how much money. Like, those fools had creepy dead eyes from the jump. Like, right. the redheadedness of it all. Like, it's just the blonde eyebrows. Like, it's just, it's so off-putting to me. Um, I hope that guy, like, legit rots a slow 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 death in prison i'm only He's, episode two but i concur <laughs> well no it ha he was i know he was convicted I saw, yesterday sorry I, no, no no but i'm still um like my hatred is building it seems really sad at this point the way they describe him but i'm like you know I've gone through the boat accident and now i'm like into the next five crimes or whatever but no, like no, the way no, they describe just wait I know the way they describe how they would posture around the town, like the little rich kids of it, like how they were you know, above the lawness. Like I knew kids like that, you know, and they were not nice. They were not nice. And they're all gross. It's just, and those girls, like the three M's, mm. you know what I mean? Like, oh God, I just, do you imagine like your best friend being in this like abusive relate? Either like they're kids, you know what I, I know. mean? Like it's really, really sad to me. So, I have thought, I don't know why I thought this for a long time, that you had relocated to New York for some reason. I don't know why I thought that. Would you ever relocate to New York? Well, I was in New York mostly. And then I relocated to LA is the way to really think about right. it. But, but I mean I, in like the last two years. No, I, I would though. If you I would? were rich, if I, if I got a job that was going to pay me a ton of money there. It's, it's, it's so expensive to live in New York. Because you got to be like rich, rich. Because I know very rich people. No, I'm saying to live oh. in New York. Like I okay. know very rich people in New York. Like very yeah. rich people. You have it's to be still not rich. enough. It still doesn't seem like enough. No, you have to be insanely rich to uh, have the kind of life. I mean, out here in LA, you can kind of fake it in terms of like comfort. Sure. You know? Yeah, I'm so not rich, but I, I feel very comfortable. And the sh so you're on but. You're on both but, shows. But yes, I would go back to New York any You're like, so. yes, Andy, that is a cute, yes, correct. I would, no, I'm just kidding. I'd um, go for a gig. I would definitely would? go for a gig, if, especially if they put me up or something. I would definitely go, for sure. Do you like being on the radio? Yes, now I do. I didn't for a long time. I struggled with it, but now I love it. What were you struggling with? Um, I think it was a place I sort of put all like any sort of struggles in life I kind of attribute it to I don't know as a creative person who's a performer I think I was like okay this is my one time uh to perform every day I don't know I kind of worked out 
I, I, all my like insecurities and stuff kind of were mirrored back to me in ways of hateful comments a lot of times. And then I stopped giving a shit and now I enjoy it. Hateful. I will fucking kill these people. <laughs> people well, are you- mean. I mean, listen, people talk shit to me on the internet. I'm not even like a, no one even really, I'm such a small, like I'm not like an influencer. I'm not like a famous person. I'm just like out here. Who knows what I'm doing? I'm well, all over the place. I was cripplingly place. insecure. So it okay. wasn't, I had to really learn what I was, you know, saying and what I, you know, and what I was doing there. And, and once I was grateful for the time to be able to go and really appreciate the opportunity, I kind of took it for granted, I think. And uh, once I was grateful for that, it didn't really matter what, you know, people are going to say hateful shit no matter what. Yeah. And it's more about them and all the cliches you heard, you know, are all true. Uh, but, but yeah, no, I love it now. I feel like being present, it's a good challenge. I feel like not a lot of people can show up and do a live show all the time. And I think it's like a really, I I love that I have that skill and that I've done it for so long. And it's a great way to practice. A lot of people who are comedians and performers and stuff don't have the daily practice of doing a live show. And I love that I get to do that. I feel like it's like a dream. Yes. I love it. I love it. We just signed on for three more years. Yeah. What? So That's I'm really so major. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And is there anything you want to like do with the show that you're not doing now? I mean, now that you've got three years in front of you, are you like, okay, like, because, you know, for me, I've, again, I don't have a platform of serious, but with this show, I really, I wanted to do something that I hadn't done before. And I want, and I think everybody you know, says to you when you're pitching a show, like, what's the log line? And like, what is this? You know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, this show is sort of, I want people to see all the different facets of my life, but then also all the incredible, random, cool people that I'm connected to or the interest, cool, cool, cool. Or the interest, like my recent episode, I did all like, I don't understand Disney adults. And I know that you were, that you were a friend, you worked in the I know you worked at Universal. Well, I was 19. No, I know. Quasimodo, Di- right? I'm Quasimodo? A, yeah, I'm not a Disney adult, though. Right, for but sure. I, I sort of had <laughs> said these kind of, not like backhanded, but I was kind of like fucking Disney adults. And so I went on this path. I actually just interviewed this guy who won the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, my God. For going to the Disney parks consecutively for eight plus years, John. Wow. Anyway, and I interviewed a couple of different people and a writer and like, is that a random fucking episode? 100%. Is it just something that was like interesting to me? Yes. Do I have a studio or anyone that's on my tail? No. But I'm like, I want to just try things and do things differently. And if I fail, fuck it. Like whatever it is what it is. For you, three years ahead of you, is there anything that you want to change or or develop or I don't know? In terms of the radio show, uh, I think I have a lot more confidence now. I think I have the capability of, I mean, I would like to make my show that I do by myself. Me and Andy are going to be doing our regular thing. We go through different, I, I love I love our show, but my show in particular, it's been, I kind of would just go on and kill time before, mm-hmm. but now I think I have a lot more focus about it. I would like to make it my version of The Daily Show or like I have the capability I've written for late night. I am a performer. I feel relatively sub- maybe semi-funny at times i feel like i can make that show like just as funny as one of those shows on a weekly basis i totally agree i mean listen i think you're you're not just a pretty face hence i'm like let's have a kid we Um, can have a kid by the way do you really want it yeah i'm going to the gynecologist on wednesday to like see what's up check it out i am everyone else is having a kid like i'm finding that um well, yeah, I'm available. My sperm is yours if you want. And I'm taking ubiquinol, which is like prenatal vitamins for guys. So like it's ready. I mean, is it sort of my dream that we would actually have a baby a natural way? Yeah. Is it weird because we're both like gay? Yes. But I'm fine with doing it the new age way of IUI. So I'm just saying. And plus I'm married and I'm more monogamous. So I was like, oh. Right, right, right. I've had also, sex with women though. But I don't know you- if I... I think we're too far gone. I haven't had sex with a man in double digit years. And I think it's just, you know, it's a no go zone, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, (laughs) As my wife's in the other room, probably like, what the fuck are you saying on this episode? (laughs) Um, 
No, but I, I you know, you have the ability and in, in getting to know you more through social. I mean, even you talking about your sobriety, which I loved your video of your anniversary. Like, Thank you. Obviously, it was emotional, but you did it in this really... I'm trying to find the right words, how it made me feel. And I was just like, John's the fucking bet. Like I saw it and I just love that you're like, uh, like here's this kind of cringy video I or whatever. I don't want to, but I, you know, yeah. I was helped in that way. Like I was, I struggled for a really, 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 really long time. And Jinx Monsoon posted something on her story. Oh, right. It was Jinx. Yeah. And and her, her post was literally like, I do not want to be posting this, but just on the off chance someone sees this who is struggling today. Like if I can do it, you can do it. And I was like, and I didn't plan on it, but the day came around. I was like, I do want some like it, that because that literally saved my life. And I was like, just seeing someone say it in that way, I was like, oh, and you know what happened? I didn't anticipate this, but I got a bunch of people, some that I even knew who were like, I don't have to tell anybody else, but I'm really struggling and like my life's on the line. It was intense and so great. And it was so nice to be able to say like, I don't need to know anything about your life, but like, you're going to be okay. Yeah. And like. That was a really, that was worth it. Even it was potentially a cringy post. It was really nice to be able to tell someone they're going to be all right. But I think that's where when you say you want to, you know, evolve the show or infuse more of kind of your take on late night or early morning, I guess, because it's the morning. Right, I know. I think that's where, you know, I see that more and more in your social, which I love. Was it booze and drugs or was it just booze for you or what was? I was never a boozer. I was... For a long time, I was an opiate addict for a long Mm. time. That was like the big one. And then, um, I mean, I drank every now and then, but like if I I didn't have, yeah, I was like a pill popper, major, major pill popper. And then like during the pandemic, I really struggled because I was like abusing Xanax so intensely. Got it. Um, And then it would kind of veer back into uh, opiates and stuff. And I'd be like, am I, you have already been through this. You know that that is heading to uh, the Murdoch place, literally. So like, I was like, so depressed and so sad. And like, I knew that that was gonna lead to just the absolute worst. And so I um, I went to a detox because I was, I was so medicated. I was on so much, so many benzos, you know, I was tranquilized to high hell. You know, it's tough because I think the prescription stuff, I mean, I because I have, you know, depression and anxiety, like so much Xanax. I mm-hmm. put it for me, it, you know, I'm I just couldn't I ended up just throwing it all away because I would take like a half and I'd be like a fucking wreck for like two days. But I think the tough thing with the pill stuff is like if you're functioning, it's like it doesn't f- smell like weed. Right. It doesn't That's why I did smell it. like booze. It doesn't smell. Exactly. It's really tough. And it's like a, a long collection of off days. You know, I was always such a like off person, but like arguably okay and normal. But like, if you were to get a bunch of people that knew me in a room, be like, is he off? He'd be like, yes. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think it was this murky, long decade of like, this guy is just off and not quite, and just definitely not present, you know, a flake. Um, and, th- but like, you're also the person saying like, this is not me, you know, that was not... But but that was just the kind of solution for everything was like, oh, I'll just like take pills for that. Like if I'm depressed, I'll just like take more Xanax or if I'm happy, I'll take more Xanax. Like it just regulated everything. Yeah. No, I really I get it. It's I did this really. Um, and our society reinforces it, too. It's like take a hundred percent. That's what I was going to say. I mean, that's yeah. the tricky thing, I think, with pills, right, is that it like totally reinforces it. I mean, with me, I went on antidepressants like two years ago and I'm on a pretty low dose and in kind of like the winter of this year, I'm like, I'm doing like fine. Like, I don't need these. And I just like went off of them. Oh, no, my... don't go off of them. <laughs> no, I know. No. And my wife one day was like, you, do you hate me? Do, like, do you not love me anymore? I'm like, why are you mm. saying that? Huh? And I'm, I'm fine. And she's like, are, what's going on with you? I was like, I don't know. I'm like, great. I like went off my antidepressant. She's like, whoa. Yeah. You know, it's like, whoa, don't do that. And I've just really come to a place where I'm like, okay, well, shit like i'd rather take them and kind of be able to kind of keep going versus you know other things yeah. but i also am a strong believer in talk therapy and exercise and food and you know i think you have to like be kind we to live your in body. a toxic toxic world and the, the things we get reinforced with are not you know taking care of yourself and being healthy it's a lot of like make money and look young that's what i know we well care. hence i'm having all this like struggle with the ozempic of yeah. it all because i make fun of it but at the same time, I'm like, dude, this is like real intense that this is being 
this well publicized. I mean, I, as I said, I went and got, you know, some Botox and filler and they're like, yeah, all you have to do is give us $500 and we'll write you a script. And I'm like, it's tempting, <laughs> but I am, you know, at the age where I'm like, no, if I'm going to have a kid, I'm going to have, I need to have a kid and I need to be as healthy as humanly possible. And like, I'm not going to fucking legit starve myself and try to get pregnant because that like is very counterintuitive. So, but it is, it is tough. I think, you know, you're, we, you're right. We are in this kind of like quick fix land, which I think is tough. And I also think in queer culture, not to like mm. force this conversation into being a gay one, which whatever. Um, it, it's it, it's it's always been one. It was, <laughs> it, this fair is enough. Fair enough. Me talking about like having sex with this old lady on a boat. Like, do you I die? I love that. <laughs> um, but I think in queer culture, not so much in lesbian culture, but in gay culture, it's rough because like it is like quick fix, wa washboard abs. I mean, you, in L.A. especially. You know, yeah, LA especially. It's true. Getting older is not cute. I like I've learned that lesson. You know, I see a lot of guys out here who are, you know, in their mid 50s and miserable on every Ozempic, on testosterone, on everything. And they're so unhappy. And like, because what is the goal that a young guy will find you hot? By the way, fuck all them. Like, yeah. I, I know it's so douchey and cheesy, but like I am my own best friend. I heard Sarah Silverman say on her podcast one time and it made me cry right when I was just like starting to actually get sober for real. And she was like, my favorite person to hang out with is me. And I was like, I'd never admitted that, but like, that's true for me. Like I literally, I do, I do, I'm afraid of people a little bit. I do not trust nobody. Yeah, like, I trust no ho. I, like hoes ain't loyal, Sean. <laughs> no hoes not. are not loyal. I and, and I every guy around here in WeHo is a cautionary tale to me because like these great people, you know, sleep, you know, the bodies for what? And like, by the way, look as great. The guys I'm trying to emulate or have my role models now are people who are like aging normally. Or like or, who, or aging who are your who are you looking up to? My friend John Hickey, you know, is yeah. like somebody who looks his age, but is so every everyone is so wet for him, including me, and is like the sweetest, kindest, most generous. Is present, he single? Loving like, what's guy. good, John? He's not. He's not. He's married okay. to another. I mean, he's my good friend, but like, you know, I, I, you look around and you say, "Well, who who am I trying to emulate? Who do I respect?" You know, and I, I don't know. It's it's. I don't need to be at the Abbey with the milfs. You know what I mean? I know it's funny though, because you know who I. It's funny that you put it. I I stopped th like think about it. You know who I find so attractive. Kate Winslet for me is like number right. one stunner. Yeah, and she's always just been like, dude, why are we obsessed with what people look like all the time? Like this is so toxic. Yeah, yeah. What, what's your? Do you think think you would date like a really high profile celebrity? Again, I guess I should say. <laughs> well, he wasn't a celebrity when we dated. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You're right. Um, Not to like always talk about like the one famous person. You know what I mean? But I'm just curious. People ask me this all the time because I dated someone like very famous, but I don't talk about who they are. I don't care. They're a hor They're like a horrible, horrible person. I just oh, leave really? It oh, my God. The well, see, Andy's a great person. And we yeah, were. Yeah, but you guys are friends and that's different. I'm just yeah. saying people always say to me like, oh, like what about famous people? And I'm like, dude, famous people, if you meet <sighs> them famous, because that's different. If you're saying you yeah. and Andy have obviously evolved your relationship. I caution folks to not date already famous people they're monsters yeah, i have an avergence to them in general celebrities i don't i have kind of the i think that's why andy and i work well together with have these celebrities on and i, I have li literally nothing to ask just because i genuinely would rather talk to the girl in tears checking me out at erewhon earlier this morning was she you know checking I mean? you out because she wanted to have a baby with you she was literally checking out my kombucha like checking me out <laughs> she was checking me. She was the checkout the Next girl. time that happens, <laughs> oh, checking you out. She was checking me no, out. Like, oh, like, no. this is how much oh, you she was owe far us. From checking, she was literally having, like, a tearful meltdown. Oh, I was my like, God, is the one on, on Beverly? Yes. I was like, what is happening? She's like, oh, my God, I don't even know. And I was like, it's going to be fine. But like, that's like, I, I don't really have a lot to ask, like, say, Derek Huff. Like, I have nothing to ask Are we people. the same person? <laughs> I think that's why I'm so well, And I think you. that's why Andy and I get along on our show, because, like, he likes that about me because I'm missing that gene of giving a shit. Someone asked Tori Amos in an interview recently. They were like, "What would you? Which celebrity would you? Would you wish you had been like locked up with during lockdown during COVID?" She was like, 
the thought of being locked up with a celebrity <laughs> during worst. COVID is my worst nightmare. And it's just true. I don't, I don't say that to sound too cool for school, but I genuinely don't put any value in it. Um, my wife and then my therapist asked me, so next week, <laughs> um, or when this will air, this week um, is Oscars week. For, so for me at my job, this is like the motherfucking Super Bowl. Sure. When this airs, I will have already been to a big party. I will be getting ready to go to another party and then I will be getting ready to go to the Oscars. And I really like last year I left the Oscar party and I ordered, I called on my phone. I was so, I was drunk. I called Joe's pizza on sunset, got a pizza, <laughs> went home and just hit, sobbed like hot tears sobbed from being tired from being on from like being around celebrity like it was so much for me and I just lost it so I know going into this week it's going to be the exact same thing and my therapist and my wife were like do you fucking even like this Liz like yeah. like after when you and I hang up right now I'm hightailing it to WeHo for fittings and that's all I like about it mm -hmm. all I like about it John I literally don't care about meeting the celebrities or being around them because I'm super awkward the only exciting thing last year was that I met one of the Vikings from Vikings Valhalla great do you ever See? watch that show no <laughs> oh, I love Vikings I love like history and shipwrecks and like all that I love that nerdy okay shit. yeah so, and he's like not famous which is kind of the joke sometimes a musician I'm impressed by because I really put a lot of value in music yeah like Lenny Kravitz I did meet and I was That's like, a skill that like anybody into. can really be a celebrity, honestly, but like not everyone can be a musician. It's a rare skill. Not like you and me. That's right. So anyway, but yeah, they were like, do you even like doing this? And I'm like, no, I, I literally just like the makeup, the hair and the dressing up. That's Putting all on a I show. like. Putting on a show. Yeah, I do. I like yeah. to put on a show. Um, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I just, I just love you. I, I love really you too. do. We always keep saying this, but I really do. I'm going to come to your show on April 7th in Los Angeles. Yes. Okay. I hope you like it. Come with an open spirit <laughs> and laugh a lot. Get stoned or something. Whatever you do to Is laugh. Is it in? I just laugh on my. Oh my God. Okay, I, I have like a really good. I will say. If I get going and laugh, it's I'm like a fun laugh. I'm so glad you're going to be there. I want people there who are going to, who I'm going to get, I'm going to enjoy uh, making laugh. Is there like a VIP section? Because I no, don't do anything. No, it is Gen a pop. hole. It is a pit. It is a Where nothing. is it? Well, I guess I shouldn't say anything derogatory. It's in an amazing venue. What? A, it's okay. It's sold out, so it doesn't matter. It's at the <gasps> yard. Then how do I go if it's sold out already? I didn't buy tickets. You just, I thought you bought tickets. Well, I'm going to have to add another date. It's sold out. Well, actually, no, it is sold out. Yeah. Wait, really? For realsies? Yeah, like you for can't realsies. just sneak me in? What I if I buy a special that. ticket? What if but I there is it's not that. It's a very like hole in the wall, like experimental. What if I night. show up? Let's talk closer to the date. I'm sure people will bail that are have already snatched up tickets. That's so bothering to me. I didn't realize. I'm like late to the draw. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll I'm so figure annoyed. Something out. Okay, we fine. will figure something out. Um, because I really want to come. And um, if a ticket get if someone cancels, I will immediately let you know. You'll be the first on my You list. promise? Yes, I do. Okay. And I can't wait to hear lesbian horse music. That's yeah. exciting. You're going to New York next week for it. Yeah, you can. You can actually buy a live stream ticket. There's a show on the tenth. And a show on the 15th, Green Room 42. You can look at the links in my bio and get a live stream ticket if you want to see those shows. They will be very funny. Uh, Danny V is my partner, who is the head writer at Watch What Happens Live. Currently, we work there together. And um, it's going to be a hilarious, hilarious, funny night. I love it. I thank you for having me on. Thank you for being Let's here. Let's go to Erewhon soon. Oh, my God. I still have my membership because I lived on Stanley across the street yeah. before I moved. And I still pay a hundred dollars for no reason. Like, give me I'll, your points. Give me I'll those buy, points. Yeah, I, sure. I'll buy you a, a or fifteen dollars smoothie, eighteen dollars smoothie. All of my money goes there, which is why we'll never have a house like you do, because all my money goes to Erewhon. We'll come on over to Glendale. It's great over here. Well, turkey base my jizz. Let's get it going. <laughs> yes, John has proven to be just as kind and funny and smart as he is. Absolutely. Dunning. Um, definitely go follow John. Check out all of his shows coming up. He better get me into that show if you're listening. Um, and also do me a favor and spam him and tell him that you want me to show. I don't know. That's good. That's becoming my theme. I'm like, hey, go harass 
my guess. Just kidding. Don't do that. But I do love it when good people rise to the top and get a platform like John has on Sirius XM. I think that's so amazing. He's definitely one of the good ones. And uh, I feel I feel so blessed we got to talk today. <laughs> 